welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey. I'm a pattern designer and illustrator. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you through my process from start to finish of making a pattern. So we're going to go through the sketching phase all the way into jumping into illustrator and making the pattern. I do have a video that's way more in depth. This is a real quick overview, but if you do know illustrator already, or you just want to watch me make a pattern, this is the video for you. You may notice my voice sounds a bit weird. I am coming off of the leg of a sinus infection, so my voice just came back and I still do sound kind of weird and you will hear it throughout the entire video. So I'm sorry if my voice right now is annoying, but there's not much I can do about it. But let's jump into this video. So this is a mock-up that I had done of just like getting an overall idea. So you're gonna see like it's oranges, it's finery, it just, it's very like spring, almost fall if you want it to be fall, but this is what we're gonna kinda go with. I know that it looks blurry, but it's because like I'm really, really zoomed into this um, artboard. But this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna draw each little element separately and then bring it into my computer to actually make the pattern. So first things first, I am making a circle that will be the orange. I'm not actually gonna use this in my pattern, but it's just for me to have a reference and I'm gonna make the highlights and shadows. So right now I'm making the shadows and that's the highlights. And I'm just making three of each. That way I have a little bit of choices. Now it's the leaves. These leaves have, just like the oranges, highlights and shadows. So I used a separate layer to make this green part. That way that can be a different color. And when I export it, since they're all in different layers, I'll be able to export each one individually just by turning off the layers inside of Procreate. So you can see that I'm turning off those two layers. I'm going to export. I'm just airdropping with a JPEG. And you can see here on my computer, I always just save it to downloads. I'll move around the files later into my hard drive, but it's just the easiest to do that. And then I'm really just going to repeat it with these next two layers and then we'll jump into Illustrator.
So this is what we have so far. I've added in my color palettes. This is also going to be an orange. I wanted it to be a perfect circle, so I used this tool right here, which is just the ellipse tool, to actually make the circle. These you've already seen. I haven't changed the colors yet, but that is what I'm going to use this for. Change up all the colors really quickly, and then we'll start the actual like pattern making process. colored this is going to be our background so I've just made it one point bigger on each side than my artboard so this artboard is a 2000 by 2400 so I've made it 2001 by 2401 and right here this is an important part of having a background so this line that you can see here is my actual artboard and then this outer line is the square that I used for the background. So to have it overlapping just this little bit is super important for pattern design. So whenever you overlap, you won't have a very thin white line that you would have if you put this directly the same size. Since it overlaps, the colors overlap, it's not going to make that line like any darker or anything because your opacity is at 100. But because it overlaps, you make sure that you don't have any kind of thin white line that can occur if you put it directly right on the line. Now, having the background as you're trying to move things can become a bit problematic because you may accidentally move your background. So what I do is Command-2 and it will lock that. Whatever is selected when you hit Command-2, you can see I'm trying to grab it and it's not happening. And when you want to be able to have access to whatever you had locked, whether that be your background or anything else, you just do option two and it comes right back. So we're going to lock that and we are going to start on the actual pattern making process. Now I'm going to do a kind of speeded version through it. So right now I'll explain what I'm doing. So when you see it, it'll make sense. This all depends on what you want to do. For me, I naturally start building on this side, on this line. That way I can move all of them over and then I'm just filling in the middle. And the same with the top, I'll start up here, copy it, do it here, and then fill in any gaps in the middle. That way I know I don't have any overlapping elements and my pattern will be very cohesive and the most important part, it will create a pattern that you can overlay again and again and repeat until you don't want to anymore.
now that the pattern is done, I'm actually just going to click my background. So I've already pressed Option Command 2 to unlock my background, and now I'm going to press Command C, which copies, and then Command B, which pastes it in the back. And then you just come over here and you press this, and that will make the color go away. Now you won't be able to see any of it because it is behind your actual background, but just trust me, that is there. And then what you're going to do is cross over, make sure everything is selected, pull it over to your swatches panel, and then we'll just use this, make any kind of shape you want, and ta-da! This is your repeating pattern. You can also right click and then go over to transform scale. You can put something like 70. Make sure the transform object is not on because this is what will happen. So it will make the whole thing 70 instead of just the actual object itself. So I click this and you can see it goes from a large scale to a smaller scale and you'll be able to see your pattern, your repeating pattern, perfect. Once you're satisfied with your pattern, maybe you've only made one, maybe you've made multiple than one, you're gonna go over to File, Export, and you can export for Web, and for Web will be this square. So if you're on Squarespace, or if you're on Spoonflower, you will need this square. It's the repeating bound box. So that, like I said, will be export, save for web, and it will save this whole box. If you want to save the swatch itself, you can go over here to Swatch Library, and then Save Swatches. It will open a secondary window, and you'll be able to save it anywhere on your computer or hard drive. 